Hey there guys, we've got uh, one of two whiskey reviews I'm going to do today, as well as a uh, whiskey barrel aged beer. So it's going to be a sort of a whiskey uh, trifecta today. Um, what we have here is Talisker. And this is Talisker, their 10 year old uh, expression. This is a Scotch whiskey from the Isle of Skye. Uh, they were established in 1830. Uh, the alcohol sits at 45.8% alcohol by volume. And um, this is actually the only distillery left on the Isle of Skye, surprisingly enough. And they got their longitude and latitude there, and they got a map sort of uh, embossed uh, or whatever on the uh, actual box, this monstrosity of a box that comes in. Alright, so we're going to open it up here and take a look at the bottle and read this feel. Nice box, anyway. Big, but nice. You can see I've already had a bit. All right. From the western shores of the Isle of Skye and the tall shadows of the Cullen Hills comes a single malt like no other, offering sweet, full-bodied spirit, warming afterglow. Yada yada. Anything else important here? Made here by Lock Harport since 1830. Don't need the tasting notes find those out as we do the review yeah um, I got more stuff on here uh, pretty much the same crap and Talisker is one of six classic malts from Scotland's malt whiskey making regions they are Talisker Island Glenkitchy Lowland Dalwini Highland Cragmore Speyside Oban West Highland and Lagavulin from Isla all right So we'll close the box up here, and we're going to pour some into a glass, and we'll be back to talk about good old Talisker 10. I guess it comes in uh, several expressions, actually. Uh, this is just a standard 10. There's a 12, an 18, and I think there's like a 20-something, and there's a 30. Uh, there's a whole bunch. The 18 actually won Best Scotch of the world uh, award at one point so we'll be right back guys all right we're back with Talisker 10 single malt scotch looking at it here it's um, dead on amber color nice golden amber good legs on the glass this is a bit higher than your uh, standard bottling. Mm. Smells really good. Um, right up front, all sweet barley. Um, almost honey-like. It's, it's just really like a big wallop of grain right in your face. bit of a brininess there. Citrus, very kind of zesty citrus kind of uh, smell. Finishes with smoke, um, mostly smoke. There's a bit of peat in there, but we're not talking anything that's um, on the level with uh, any of your uh, Isla scotches much more smoky than peaty. Uh, very uh, very phenolic. Alright, we'll go right to the taste. It smells very good. Uh, no alcohol in the smell at all. No harshness. Very, very smooth. A um, bit of oak and vanilla as well in the end. It's pretty damn complex. It's pretty good. So we'll go right to the taste. Mm. 
very warming. Uh, that's to be expected the alcohol, although the alcohol doesn't, it's not harsh or coming out in the gag reflex. Um, pretty much the nose carries right over to the taste. Um, sweet grain again right up front. Honey kind of uh, barley taste. Um, that's the initial note. Very, very sweet. Um, and usually I don't like whiskey that's quite this sweet, but it's what comes afterwards that balances out uh, everything that came before. And it's what's really making me like this whiskey quite a bit, honestly. Um, starts out with the sweetness, moves right over to the sort of uh, briny, uh, brackish kind of seawater taste. And then it finishes with this big wallop of smoke. Um, again, there's a little hit of peat in there, but it's mostly this big, big smoke character that finishes off with the uh, little bit of the wood. It's mostly big smoke, and it's got a citrusy kind of zestiness that uh, coats the entire mouth. really really good uh, this is actually more expensive than um, Lafroy uh, quarter cask or Ardbeg uh, at least here in Canada you know, especially in maritime provinces where we have sin taxes on our alcohol so uh, the price is quite fucking outrageous actually um, you can get this for much a much better price just about anywhere else um, and it's well worth picking up um, it's not one of those peat monsters uh, from Isla. It's not Ardbeg, it's not Lefroig. Um, but it's very much a very nice, smoky, phenolic kind of whiskey. And it still has some of the characteristics of um, more sweeter whiskeys, more fruity whiskeys, that uh, someone who hasn't really gotten into the peatier side of scotches would really appreciate. And it sort of settles them in, eases them in for the smoke and it's a good you know it's a good like beginner intermediate kind of like smoky peaty kind of whiskey uh, get you ready for those bigger boys um, definitely a better purchase um, than say Bowmore 12 or uh, one of those blended scotches that have a peaty character like uh, Johnny Walker uh, Black um, Honestly, this is a much more high-quality whiskey than those ones, and but it's still, you know, it's still going to give you the same, the same sort of, uh, you know, education, I guess, to uh, get you ready for the bigger ones. So, keeping that in mind, um, the only real problem with this is the price. I imagine it is still fairly expensive for what it is. Uh, even if you're getting it in a, as at, at its, you know, more decent price in a different country, but. Talisker 10 is an excellent whiskey. Um, I don't even think you really need any water in this. Um, it's so, it's so smooth going down. Uh, smells really good, really smooth. So you wouldn't need any water. Um, definitely recommend it. Thumbs up for this. Talisker 10, a uh, really good whiskey. Uh, it's not quite in the upper tier of great, great scotches, but it's pretty damn close, I'd say. And that's just coming from an amateur opinion who's only had a handful of scotches so far, so what the fuck do I know, right? But uh, cheers, guys, and we'll see you again here soon.